Hello! Hi YouTubers, well it's early morning here but maybe where you are it's like 2 a.m. Or, or 8 p.m. and you're just about to head out but that nasty error is popping up on your computer or maybe some other issue. Well in this video we'll try and help you out. God bless. <laughs>
example, the computer has looked locked up, then we might press this button one time and nothing happens. In this case, it will happen because it's still in the startup, early startup stage, and so the computer hasn't started booting up into the operating system and the operating system is not preventing us from shutting it down again. So in this case, turning it on, and just a little while later, turning it off, will work just fine. Yeah. However, if the operating system has already taken control, you might find that pressing the button shortly like that will actually start, for example, a Windows shutdown. Um, depending on the operating system that you use, things might look a little bit differently and depending on the settings that you configure in the operating system. However, if your computer is started up and for some reason it becomes uh, locked, you know, your Windows, you can't move your mouse, nothing is happening, the computer is completely frozen or locked up, then what we can do is we can keep pressing the power button. Uh, so in this case, you know, <coughs> it's going to react just a little bit differently, but I'm going to show you anyway. So we would keep pressing the power button for uh, at least four or five seconds and the computer would turn off, even if it's in a locked up state. So that's a handy thing to know and that people might not know. Sometimes you can also find a reset button, not on all computers, but on this one, there is one. So if it started, and it's running and the operating system for some reason has locked up you can also hit the reset button and when you press that it will just basically just recycle it's like very briefly dropping the power and and restarting it although that's not entirely correct i suppose but you know for all intents and purposes you can use the reset button so this reset button is not like it's going to reset your system settings or anything like that it's basically just doing a reset of the power right so i'm going to just turn it back off now there we go, and uh, that's all I wanted to show you. God bless. Hi everyone, I just want to show you the difference between a USB 3 and a USB 2 port. So a USB 2 port is the black one over here that one and the USB 3 port is the blue one that one so Between a USB 3 and a USB 2 port. So the USB 2 port is the black one over here, that one, and the USB 3 port is the blue one, that one. So you can also often see this symbol next to USB tree port. The USB 2 port symbol is a little bit different. <clears throat> Which one do you think is the fastest? The blue one. Right. USB 3 is faster. It's a new standard, faster technology. USB 2 is a bit slower. USB 3 is often backwards compatible with USB 2 devices. So you can take a mouse or a keyboard or any other USB device and insert it into a USB 3 port and it should work. There's also a newer standard, USB 3.1. I believe that port is red. Yes, there we have a USB 3.1 port, red, and a USB 3 port, blue. There's also another type of connector, a Type-C USB 3.1 port, and that's over there. Um, another, you can also have a USB 3 port as a Type-C connector for memory. So here, so here we've got, got something, something interesting. interesting. We, we got, got a USB 3.1 port as a type C and next to it a blue USB 3.1 port. So always be on the watch out for labels and colors and so on. And as you can see, sometimes different um, uh, motherboard vendors may use different colors for 3.1. So uh, just be on the lookout.
Okay, yeah, different display ports. So here we have a stock standard 15 pin VGA connector, very old school, old style VGA type connector. Then we have a HDMI connector, which you also see often on televisions, and a display port, which is a bit of a, a standard which you can only see on computers <coughs> most of the time. I've never seen a big uh, LCD television with a display port. So old style VGA, HDMI and display port and there's one more, a DVI connector. So here we have a DVI connector, I think in this case it's a DVI-D. There's a few different combinations of these, always watch this little uh, pin layout here, there might be little dots around it, just make sure that you got the right connectors because there's a few different standards of these and you want to make sure that you got the right cable and not breaking any or forcing any pins when you insert it. Just above it here is another um, a graphics card and there's a HDMI plugged in um, with a few display ports next to it. So just be careful because you know if you have the HDMI and that That's their HDMI connector. See, it, it looks somewhat similar, so don't go and try and force this into there. This is specifically only meant for HDMI, and then this one is for display port. And so here we got a, a DVI connector, and again there's a few different layouts, so make sure that you always watch the pins and just have a look and compare. So that goes on here, and when you turn this in, if you start turning in one side and you make it really tight and then you start turning in the other and you get stuck, um, then you just loosen this back up a little bit, give it a bit of a jiggle, and insert it. See, there we go, we, we got this one getting stuck, so then I'll just loosen this up, jiggle a little bit, come a bit back out, jiggle a little bit more, and twist it in. Again, this is a very difficult one, I'm just going to loosen it all the way, pull it out a little bit, and just get that thread really right because if you keep forcing it in with the thread going wrong, then you can, now the other side is doing it, then you can really get your thread ruined on the inside and that's not what you want to do. Great, so now it's nice and tight, perfectly. So if this comes loose while you're screwing it off, uh, just unscrew it and only insert it. Uh, this is just all the task type of connectors and I like these ones better because you know, you just basically plug it out, plug it back in, all good. Let's have a look at the back of the monitor. So at the back of this monitor there's three connectors, the standard 5815 pin and then the DVI-D uh, that I've shown you on the computer as well and the HDMI. This, uh, uh, 
monitor from Acer, even though it's got true grad inputs, it doesn't have DisplayPort. So if you run out of connections on either the monitor or the computer, simply get an adapter. You can get like HDMI to DisplayPort uh, and all sorts of other combinations, right? So just uh, have a look on, on eBay, but don't get too cheap a thing. Uh, just get a decent quality one and you should be fine to connect it all up. So how are you connecting your computer? Just let me to your monitor. Just let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, please, and have a great day. God bless. Hello. Hey there, welcome to Selenium Web Driver tutorial by Simply Love. My name is Anagha and today in this video we'll be talking about the Selenium Web Driver basics. What is that you should be expecting from this video? Let's say what is Selenium. Whenever we are learning about any tool, it's good to know a little bit brief history of it. So we will look into how Selenium has evolved over years to become the most popular web application automation tool and why use Web Driver. And then we will understand what is Selenium Driver. While we learn this, I will also be touching upon some drawbacks of manual testing and how automation helps and then a deep dive into architecture of web driver as you know every automation tool has its own advantages and limitations so we will be understanding the limitations of selenium web driver and how we work around this and then i will demonstrate the web driver in action for which i will use a simple web application use case to automate so let's get started so before we talk about selenium let's understand a few drawbacks of manual testing let's take an example of a very simple use case as a user i want to log in to my web application using username and password a very simple use case and it's a very common use case for any kind of web application you're working so as a tester what do i do i need to write multiple test cases to test this use case so i can use multiple data sets like valid credentials invalid credentials null values and so on to test this particular use case and then what you do you start executing the test cases one by one you find bugs then your developers fixes them and then you will need to re
Hey everybody, here we are. We're one water away from 10,000 waters. It's quite a milestone, quite an accomplishment. So I've been spending years thinking about this moment, thinking about what I'll do in this video. I was thinking for a while, maybe I'll drink a huge container of water. Or I was thinking, you know, maybe for something special, I'll get a big tattoo that says water on it to celebrate this moment. But I don't think anything like that would live up to the hype of this moment. And as I've been doing this channel, every time I drink water for a video, I'm constantly reminded of how awesome the water itself is, how delicious water is, how important it is, how essential it is to life. Just every time I sip water, it's like a good little reminder of just how great water is. And I think that's a big part of why people are drawn to this channel in particular, because I have a lot of other YouTube channels where I do like repetitive stuff sometimes, and none of them get the audience that this water channel has. Because I think people are just naturally drawn to water. They understand the purity of it, the importance of it. It's essential to life, cleaning, just everything. It's simple, you know, H2O. It's a beautiful thing. I think pe some people say they don't even like the taste of water, but I think even they respect water and they respect how important it is. Just none of us would exist without water. It's, it's so vital to life. It's so important. And, you know, as I was thinking of what I could do for, for this video, I was researching all kinds of different things involving water. And I was on the uh, Charity Water website. It's a charity that helps bring clean water to people in need. Because there, there's only 1% of the water on Earth is, is actually drinkable and potable. And a lot of people around the world just don't have access to clean water. I was on the Charity Water website and I saw that it's about $10,000 on average to do a water project on Charity Water. And I was thinking, if I said $10,000, $10,000, it's like, the fates aligned, you know, perfectly. So that's what episode 10,000 is. I'm going to ask you guys to help me out. And together, I would like us to get a well built for people in need to donate $10,000 to charity water, to help bring access to water to people in need. Something that I really like about charity water in particular is that 100% of donations to them go towards the water projects. There's no overhead costs, there's no administrative costs. It just 100% goes to bringing clean water to people in need. So I'm setting a goal of $10,000. I'm gonna start it off myself by donating $2,500 to this. And the people at Hawaiian Springs also reached out to me. I made a video a long time ago saying that they're my favorite water of all time after reviewing hundreds of waters. And after they saw that, they reached out to me to see if they could help. And they're matching my donation of $2,500. So them and me already got us halfway there. We're already at $5,000. I'm just asking you guys to help out do the other half, the other $5,000 to get us to $10,000. Um, I never ask you guys for money. I never ask you guys to share a video or anything. But um, I, am, I am right now. Please, uh, you know, if you have any extra money, please donate a little bit, whatever you can. If you don't have any money, just share this video or share a link to the project. Um, if you have a birthday coming up, be like, hey, family and friends, hey, can you, for my gift, donate a little bit of money to this? The water community on YouTube has been growing, and I think this is a good opportunity for us to just all come together and make a big difference. We can like, actually, like, save lives. We can, you know, bring clean water to people who, who actually need it. Tullus says that water is the divine source of all living beings. And that's so true. Just wa water itself is so awesome, so beautiful, so delicious, so vital to life. Just look at that. Isn't that just beautiful, that water itself? I want to give a big thank you to Hawaiian Springs for their donation. I tested hundreds of waters. They're literally my favorite. And I, I said that multiple times, you know, before they even reached out to do this donation. But yeah, big thank you to them. It's an honor to have them as the 10,000th water. Check out their social media and their website. I, I've literally recommended them so many times, even before their donation 
it, it just it really, it really worked out perfectly that they they wanted to help out. It's a high pH water. It's really delicious. It's from Hawaii. Um, so good. And thank you everybody who who watched these videos. Thank you everybody who started a water channel themselves. Everybody who commented. The channel would have stopped a long time ago without you guys commenting and liking videos and watching. Um, I mean, you guys motivated me to stay hydrated. You guys motivated me to continue. And um, just thank you, you, everybody, for your help. And here we go. 10,000 waters. Gather around and I'll tell you it's a wild, strange man you should all know where. And since the 4th of December 21, one, he's been making water drinking videos for fun. Bye, everybody. Remember to stay hydrated. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. Let's take a moment to recognize the heroes who count. Canadian Mike Smith holds the world record for the largest number counted to in one breath, 125. But the world record for the largest number ever counted to belongs to Jeremy Harper from Birmingham, Alabama. In order to set the record, Harper never left his apartment. He got regular sleep, but from the moment he woke up in the morning until the moment he went to bed at night, Harper did nothing but count. He streamed the entire process over the internet and raised money for charity while doing it, but after three months of counting all day, every day, he finally reached the world record. One million. Now, a million might not sound like a lot, but think of it this way. One thousand seconds is about 17 minutes, but a million seconds is more than 11 days, and a billion seconds, well, that's more than 31 years. There's no full video online of Harper counting all the way to a million, but you can watch John Parchik count all the way to 100,000 if you have 74 hours to spare. John also has some other channels. One involves more than 300 videos of himself eating carrots. Another, more than 3,000 videos of himself drinking water. Many of John's videos literally have no views. They are as lonely as a video on YouTube can get. A great way to find such videos is a website made by Jan Vanderkrusen. 
This website auto plays videos on YouTube that no one has yet watched. John and Jeremy, as well as Mike, the one breath counter, counted like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. But that's not the only way to count, and it doesn't seem to be the one we're born with. Additive counting is the one we're all. Hello! Hello.
If you have been following our live streams, you might have wondered how we have so many live streams running at once. So today, I'm going to show you how you can start multiple live streams at the same time on the same YouTube channel. Alright, so to start multiple live streams, you're going to need multiple instances of OBS, and there are two ways to do this. The first way is by running one instance of OBS per computer, but this only works if you have multiple computers. The second way, and the way that most of you are probably going to use, is running multiple instances of OBS on one computer. However, you have to keep in mind that this only works if your hardware is capable. I will be showing both methods with timestamps in the description, so let's get started with setting up the first live stream. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is head over to your YouTube account, then you want to click on your profile icon on the top right, and then click on YouTube Studio. Once you're on your channel dashboard, what you want to do is click on Create, and then go live. Now, now once you're on, on your live streaming dashboard, dashboard what you want to do is click on the schedule stream button and then create a new live stream. Once you're here you want to type in a title, a description and then set a time when you want the stream to start. Now once this is done you want to click on either yes it's made for kids or no it's not made for kids depending on what type of stream you are starting. For this test I'm going to click on no it's not made for kids. Then you want to click on create stream where YouTube will now automatically create your event. And just like that I have created my first live stream. Now if you don't know how to set up a live stream you should watch your OBS tutorial which will be linked in the description below. Now what you want to do in order to start a stream is open an OBS window. But if you are opening your first instance of OBS all you want to do is click on OBS studio. And to do that all you want to do is click on OBS studio. Once your OBS window is open, what you want to do is click on settings, click on output, and then select the bitrate that your computer is able to stream at. In my case, I will be using 2500 kbps. Then what you want to do is go to stream, select YouTube, and then paste the stream key. Then you want to click apply and OK, and just like that, your OBS is ready to live stream. Once you are ready to live stream, what you want to do is click start streaming. And now my preview is live on YouTube and all I have to do is click go live in order to go live. And now to start a new live stream again, all you want to do is go back to your YouTube studio. Then you want to click create once again and then go live again. Then proceed with the exact same steps, schedule a stream, add a title, a description and a time, select if your live stream is made for kids and then create your stream. Now once you're here, what you want to do is click on your window search bar once again, type in OBS, and then hold your shift key while opening OBS Studio. Now what this will do is you will open another window of OBS. There is a warning message saying that OBS is already running, however you can just ignore this and click launch anyway. Once you're here, what you want to do is create a new stream key on your dashboard, add a name for the stream key on your dashboard, add a description, and then select create and then copy the stream key. Go back to your new OBS window and then follow the exact same steps that I demonstrated before. Go to your settings, go to stream, and then paste in the stream key. Then click apply and OK. And then just like that, you are able to start your new live stream. I will now click on start streaming and in a second you will see the preview go live on YouTube. And now my preview is live on YouTube and all I have to do is click go live in order to go live and then I will have multiple live streams streaming at the same time on the same YouTube channel. So those were the first ways to stream multiple events at the same time. Streaming on multiple computers is just as simple, the only difference being that you will start the second OBS window on a different computer instead of on the same one. Now there are a few things to keep in mind when you're running multiple live streams. For example, if you're using Nightbot, Nightbot will be in the chat of both live streams and any commands and timers that you've set will be triggered in both streams at the same time. You should also remember to balance your OBS settings in order to control your network usage as multiple live streams will use a lot more bandwidth. And if you're looking for how to host your live stream without using your own computer, or how to stream 24-7, you can watch our other video on 24-7 live streaming. And finally, you can also combine dual streaming with 24-7 streaming to have multiple 24-7 live streams. So that is all for this video, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
have been killed for meat or sometimes by farmers to protect crops. Others have been taken by poachers. Uh, who would be more threatening in set pieces, uh, Ali and Jabbar? I think set pieces will be important for United today. You've got Matitu's tall, you've got Maguire, you've got Ronaldo, you've got McTominay. So we shouldn't be we shouldn't be conceding goals from set pieces. Uh, It'll be on Oriana, a champion I kind of want to say he's learnt or relearnt as he's played through the tournament. Hello, my How's it going gamers? Today we're going to be seeing just how many characters we could put in a YouTube comment. Basically we're just trying to see how much spam we could throw in the comment section. Now I'm sure half the people watching this video will just be YouTube spam bots trying to figure out how much spam they could throw at you at one time. But for those of you who are just curious like me and just want to find out how much you guys could throw in the comment section, stay tuned. So this is the winner of our last shout out. If you guys want to win a shout out, all you guys have to do is subscribe down below and I choose a random subscriber every single video. All right, so let's go on to the world's longest YouTube comment. So as of right now, there are comments on YouTube that have been posted a while back that are supposedly longer than the max that we can do now. Here are some pictures of those comments, but today we'll be seeing how much we can currently throw on YouTube. Now I do know that Timeworks already made a video like this, and I try not to copy him ever, but this video is just too perfect to pass up. I'm just going to throw my own twist on it. Hopefully you guys understand and don't hate me for it. I'm not trying to copy the dude. I keep limiting my channel because I have to skip out on topics because he's covered it once, but I decided I'm just not going to do that because if I do that, I'm never going to have content for you guys. The only reason I mention this is because of the comment section down below. A lot of people are like, hey, why are you copying Timeworks? It's like, hey. I've been making these videos for over a year. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go into YouTube and, and see how many E's we could throw in that comment section. So I figured, what a better video to test this out on than his video going over the H's. 
I'm sorry, time works. So we're gonna find this handy dandy website right here, and oh, it already remembers me. Look, it already has all my E's from last time. All right, so we're gonna start with 500 E's. Let's see what happens. All right, so 500 works. Let's step it up, double it. That is 1,000 E's, and that works. So now let's double that, and this should get us to 2,000. Still post, edit again, we're gonna jump all the way to, I believe, 4,000 here. No problem, 4,000 E's, let's go. Next is 8,000, let's just test this. Yeah, this is 8,002, so somehow we got two extra E's, that's odd. All right, so that's 8,000. So in my last video, we did this for the community tab. We tried to see how big of like a community tab post you could make, and the max was 10,000, so I'm thinking it's gonna be 10,000 again. But why didn't you just try that the first time? Because I'm trying to make content. I could have made like a two second long video. 10,000 E's, let's go. And yeah, it, it works. That's a lot of damage. All right, the moment of truth. Wait, what? Okay, returned an error. First problem. That's so weird. It's kind of like glitching out down here, so I can't even see what error message it's saying. But uh, 10,000 did post, so kind of confused because right now it doesn't want to. Okay, so 10,000 E's, that's the max you guys could do. I do apologize, Timeworks, for spamming your channel with 10,000 E's, but yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. Slap that like button, go ahead and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys on my next video if you return, which I hope you do. Anyways, thank you gamers for everything, and I will see you guys on the next video.
appreciate it, guys. Another AFK money and OP legend. Oh my god, I haven't recorded this video for one hour. Holy god.